Welcome to The Law, Your Money, and You. I'm Roberta Sapphire, an attorney in Sharon, Massachusetts. And I'm Camille Barron, a financial organizer also in Sharon, Massachusetts. And Roberta, the show, The Law, Your Money, and You, we always cover topics about both legal and financial issues. And today, with the world being what it is, some of our viewers thought it was very important to talk about the law enforcement in their community. It's the, the real some law guests today. The yes. real law. Yes. And we welcome you both. We're so happy and proud to have you here. We have our new chief, Tilden Kaufman, and a lieutenant, John Ford. Now, did I say that right? You did. Thank you. Okay. Let's start with you, Tilden. Let's tell tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Um, I came on the department in 1986. I grew up in Sharon. Graduated from Sharon High School in 1981. Um, again, came on the department in 1986, got promoted to sergeant in 1993, lieutenant in 1996, deputy chief in 2014, and within the past week I was promoted to chief, and I'm very happy and proud to be that person. Congratulations. Thank We're you. very happy yeah, too. And so is the community Thank proud. You. And you have one of your staunch supporters here. <laughs> He's not, not, not only tell, a tell us a little bit about yourself, because you, you might be have a little more diverse background where Tilton always wanted to be a police officer. <laughs> um, yes, I actually started my career here in Sharon as a, a public school teacher back in 1981, and I was a, a teacher for a little bit over 16 years, ending my career as a director of music. Um, I had a, a dad who grew up in Sharon, was a police officer for 40 years, and mm. so uh, at the age of 40 I decided to try a different path. Uh, and went to the police academy and subsequently have been there about 16, 17 years now. And uh, for whatever reason, I keep getting promoted. So <laughs> I appreciate that. So it's a great opportunity to serve the community in a different capacity. But the fun thing is I actually work with a lot of kids, uh, no, no, they're, they're adults now, uh, men and women at the police station that I taught in junior high school. And no so kidding. So it's, it's, it's that kind of fun. Is that an experience? awkward? It, it is strange because they remind me of a few things that yeah. like, <laughs> I get in trouble for not doing my music report, Mr. You know, Lieutenant yeah. Ford, you remember that? You know, that kind of Because my, my son was one of your students sure. yeah. who's in his 40s now. And Absolutely. At, at, when we were at the uh, uh, swearing-in ceremony, he says, Ma, there's Mr. Ford. <laughs> Do you remember? I go, sure I do. <laughs> Some interesting times. So tell, tell us about your wife, too. My, my wife is a uh, longtime school teacher in Sharon as well. She just recently retired and has gone into a photography business. So she's, she's very much into Sharon history. She's more of a townie even not growing up here. She has more affinity to the history of Sharon than I, even I. So it's, it's now, now, one of, one of the things that the chief was uh, going to do is we would talk about violence, and now they have school monitors. And one of the things is how was it back then and, and now, and what do they do? Tell us about that. Take your turns. <laughs> I think, well, today we have a school resource officer. So we actually have an officer in the schools. And having him in the schools, the kids open up to him. And actually, they have a, he has a, it's Officer Hawking, actually has a tremendous relationship with the school student body. He stops in at the middle school, introduces himself there, so they know him by the time they get into high school, and they're, they're very open to talking to him, whereas when I, I'm going back into the 1980s now and the late 70s, um, it was a lot looser, there was a lot more going on, a lot of things went unchecked, and I think today everybody's aware of bullying, everybody's aware of school violence, and I think we have a pretty good handle on it now, and a lot of things get nipped in the bud just by the fact that the school resource officer is there talking to the kids and keeping up with things, relationships with the teachers, the kids. He can be in his office at school and kids will knock on the door and walk in and talk to him. Uh, Officer Hawking, I'm having this problem. I'm having that problem. Just having him there opens up a lot of doors that were never there before. Is this just the middle school or the high school He, also? he basically situates in the high school, but he stops at the other schools too. Oh. At some point there's been discussion about a second SRO for the middle school, which would be a great idea. That would have to be played out through funding and other means at this SRO. point. SRO. School resource officer. School resource. Isn't that yes. something? That's amazing. Yes. How, when you were in school, um, when you were teaching even, how, how long ago did you say that was? Well, I, I graduated high school in 70, but I taught until 1996. Okay. So, so we're talking making him say how long close, <laughs> close to 10 years now, right? <laughs> it's, it, it's changed dramatically. Um, and yeah. was there a resource officer there oh, at the time? No, there was not. And, and just to kind of... The, 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 tag on to what uh, Chief Kaufman uh, just stated, 
SRO Hawking has done such a phenomenal job, not in just the, the everyday activities, but developing relationships with kids. July 3rd, it was a pleasure to watch him at the front gate of the, of the lake being hugged and, and handshaking and high fives from past students, people that have graduated, those type of relationships that have continued, people that he helps on a day-to-day -day basis is phenomenal. I know, I know Chief Coffin and myself would like to see that program expand to the middle school. Sure. I mean, there's that mm. type of need. And if we had those things in our day, I think a lot of situations mm. would have been uh, handled mm. and, 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 and taken care and of. Do you think now the necessity is even more because of the internet? Uh, far more. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, in my day, in the 70s and 80s, uh, you had an altercation or difficulty with another individual. Oftentimes, it just resulted in some pushing and shoving and maybe a fist fight. And at the end of that, usually you ended up being best of friends. Yes. Um, nowadays, it's a lot more insidious. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that mm -hmm. you can have the type of social media as almost a weapon and a tool to, to utilize n numerous people in that type of activity, we've seen that you know, uh, nationwide with sure. suicides yeah. resulting in that. That's, mm -hmm. that's why it's so important to have someone that can develop a relationship that can stop that. Because once that starts going, it's almost impossible to stop. What's that one of the things that you were talking about, expanding like programs, maybe programs with cyberbullying? Because once they start with a cyberbullying, you may not get called in at that point, but you call, get called in at the result of it. Right. I think a lot yeah. of it has to do with educating parents, too. If the parents, really what it starts with is the, if the parents bring their kids and raise them right, we won't have this issue. If the parents let the kids go unchecked, eventually they're going to get on the internet. They may join a chat group or, or some group. And the thing with the internet is it's so easy to hide. It's so easy to pile on. It's so easy to jump in and target someone that you may not like. Mm. And, and that leads to, that, le that starts there in front of a computer. And then eventually everybody sees each other in school. Kids talk things happen, and then they go back home and they go back on the internet, things happen. Mm. We've seen that numerous times. Um, you can, it's easy to hide behind the internet. Mm. So without the internet, it was usually a face-to-face -face thing, like Lieutenant Ford said, and it would be one and done, hopefully. Here, it just continues on, and there's so many means to reach out and bully people. But ultimately, if you think about it, it's the parents that need to raise their kids the right way mm. and teach the right values. What but, are some of the things typically that precipitate even the beginning of that type of cyberbullying? Some kinds of uh, differences or issues between the students that might not in the past but now yeah. would turn it into could, that? It, we've seen it in the middle school. Not often, but we've seen it in the middle school at that level. It could be anything. It could be a disagreement. And then suddenly somebody realizes, hey, I can reach this person on the Internet or mm -hmm. a social media chat room, mm -hmm. and then other people pile on and get involved. It could start real innocently and then just grow. Yeah. And Boy, boyfriend, see. girlfriend issues, yeah. you know, the exacerbate into jealousy. It, it, it doesn't take much. It's yeah. just that the tool is just so rampant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I will say that the Sharon Public Schools have done a, a really good job of being on the forefront of uh, bullying campaign or anti-bullying campaigns. Did they, I have and it makes two a difference. questions. The school resource officers, is this throughout Massachusetts or throughout the country? How, how do they... Do they? I, I know you have like right. police chiefs meeting there. Do they say we got this new program and we're going to try this? It, if you remember the DARE program, Drug Abuse Resistance Education, yeah. that's how it started. Uh, detective Lender was actually the first one that did that. He became a full-time detective, so he left. The DARE program pretty much morphed into the school resource officer program. Oh. So uh, it's more of a broader role, and it takes up different aspects beyond the DARE program. Um, the DARE program still around? It's around in certain okay. places, but I don't know of too many areas around here that have it. Hmm. The school resource officer just offers so much more. Wait, it sound, sounds wonderful. Uh, um, my other question was, uh, I, I noticed you start with the parents there, but some parents are too busy. So I noticed, like, I'm out in Arizona a lot. I noticed the little kids' schools, the uh, second, third grade, all over the walls of the hall. Uh, be kind, this is wrong, and, and they start them early. Right. So I, I wonder if more schools will start it. Well, I, can, I can tell you that um, every school in Sharon, I think it's a state law, as a matter of fact, has mm -hmm. to have a bullying program with education. And I think the earlier they started, I know they started in the middle school, and I, I believe they probably started the Cottage Street too. Isn't yeah, that wonderful, the early the schools. bullying program? And just to get the idea into the kids' heads, say this is wrong. Don't do this. Well, Massachusetts happens to be the forerunner in, in cyberbullying. We even have uh, the Mark Center in uh, Bridgewater, Massachusetts Aggression yeah. Reduction Center, where people from all over the world come. In fact, uh, the head of it is Elizabeth Englander, is from Sharon. She's mm -hmm. been on our show. Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, it's fascinating the the programs they have. But she was saying uh, different municipalities come there, and then they. Uh, they do it, but you you have other types besides the school violence. You have these other types of violence, like we have hugs. Mm -hmm. Are they yeah. all over? Do you know that uh, help us get safe? Get safe, yeah. yeah. Help us yeah. get safe. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, domestic violence yeah, against that's a, women. Mostly. That's a whole level, a whole yeah. other level. Mm. Um, that's obviously out of the schools. It's got nothing to do with the schools. Right, right. That that's would be yeah. husband, wife violence, boyfriend, girlfriend violence. But you get called on. You you must get called on more things than the average person can can think of. Well, yeah. yeah usually, people don't want to see us. That's the point <laughs> of our job. They call us when they need us. Right. Um, the the yeah. dif difficulty for us in in the way the population of Sharon is now changing, the, the demographics of it, and so forth. It, a lot of times, particularly in Asian families, there's a hesitancy to call if there's domestic violence. Um, it's, it's more, from my experience, a cultural thing. And uh, oh. probably it's good to get that word out there. That's not bad if you're experiencing these issues to deal with the police department. We're there to help. We're not certainly there to make it more difficult, which is to make sure that people are safe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. as, the, as the town changes, I think that's, a, that's <coughs> an area that we need to do a better job of edifying the public. Mm. Well, oh. one of the things that seems yeah, to pre ahead, precipitate yeah. violence, especially now, um, the economics. Some, sometimes people uh, become desperate. People who might, maybe they're prone to certain types of behaviors, but something in the in the past might have prevented them. But now people become desperate. You have drugs. So are you seeing an increase in those types of crimes now as uh, that you might be able to say the economy is a factor that contributed? I think having, you know, d different than when Tilden and I grew up, having both parents, the necessity of them working full time, there are stresses there, certainly. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, people coming home tired and exhausted and uh, just being a, a, a mother or father is a full time job. So that, that difference, I think, causes for the, the probably the family life to, to, to break down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, then you have other, other resulting issues. Mm. There has been an increase in drug activity, but that's more na nationwide, I think. And mm. uh, well, we're very mm -hmm. cognizant and sensitive to that and looking at that as well. Mm. But all those things have some sort of form of violence involved in them, whether it be psychological or actual physical violence. So. And occasionally mm. everybody has a bad day, and yeah. they may have a bad yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah, right. And then that bad moment turns into us. <laughs> All in all, I will tell you, this is probably, one, I, I know it's one of the safest communities in Massachusetts, and it's a great place to work. Do you have a good call to other communities, like to help out? Like they're having a we have a mutual aid thing. pack, so you know if there's something major happened a few years ago, we had to go to Foxboro for an incident that was taking place at the uh, Foxboro Com and that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. And our detectives are always mutually working with other detectives. Yeah, we work in you know, with the other departments. Not often would we get called out of the blue to just go assist with a major incident but we do all help each other at times. Mm. And another population that is very vulnerable are seniors. <clears throat> you have all these phone scams and sure. all kinds of things. You might have someone who's, who is caring for someone at yeah. their home. Do you see much of that type of activity Unfortunately, too? Unfortunately, that's my, one of my pet peeves. Really? People that prey on the elderly are people that can't help themselves. There are, it's sad, and I, I believe I've talked about it before probably on the show. It's sad that there are people out there that will do whatever they can do to steal from people that can't help themselves. Mm. They may, again, here we go with the internet and social media, they can send out 50 emails to 50 people. If one of those people believes what the email says, it may be, I have your brother as a hostage, you need to send $10,000 right now. If they respond to that, that person's got $10,000 by sitting at a desk typing oh, yeah, a thing. Yeah. Um, it's out there. We get it once in a while and it's, we do everything we can do to find out who's doing that stuff. But there's a lot of people that steal and take yeah. from the uh, take yeah. from people that can't help themselves. Yeah, and it's sad. I don't know. You also, I I know about that. We were also getting to where they uh, it's supposed to be like caregivers. They used to be the caregivers were the one. You know, if your ring's missing, it's a cleaning. It person. happens on occasion. Yeah, you it have happens. where the caregiver givers just abuse physically abuse. I don't, don't want to take care yeah, of them. I mean, I don't want to paint. I mean, there's a lot of really excellent caregivers. Oh yes. We do occasionally run into some that this thing's missing and things happen. It, it um, runs the gamut from family yeah. members to outsiders. So no, it's supposed just, to feed yeah. the people, and instead of feeding them, they just let them. I don't the, think the, we've seen the, that too the much. The nice, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the nice thing in Sharon, there's a they good thought. connection of the, of the services for the elderly, thanks to with people like Norma Fitzgerald and so forth, that have really made that, that connection with individuals yeah. and communities. Mm -hmm. Well, what you mentioned about family members, too, and getting back to what you said, the stresses on 
family members, whether they're parents of children or a caregiver, right. or someone who's elderly themselves, and they might be caring for a husband or wife who's elderly, they don't have a lot of energy, and they might get just pushed to the limit sometimes right. because it's so a very demanding we're, job. We're also seeing elderly grandparents uh, be the primary caretakers for their grandkids. And that has a different type oh, yeah, of stress that's involved a lot to that. Going on now. Certainly. So now you have two gener two different generations, you know, with one in between trying to connect uh, on differences in, in discipline, dis di you know, differences yeah. in attitudes. So that's difficult. You know, mm. it's difficult when it's your own child, when it's your grandchild, and that that makes it even more problematic mm. sometimes mm -hmm. in making that connection. Even again, that's where an SRO or school resource resource officer really is can form the functional bridge between those two components. What would you say, parents? What are some of the early warning signs that there might be some bullying going on against their child? Well, for for me, I, any time a child, and at, at certain ages, they're going to become more and more withdrawn. That's right. that's natural for a teenager. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when it becomes more and more withdrawn and sullen and so forth, I think making that extra effort to just try to find out, try to try to make the, then you're going to be shut down uh, probably 90 out of 100 times, but to stay on top of that and maybe connect with uh, other people that know them, other relatives that know this, your, your child that could probably give you the insight. Could a parent contact the school resource officer oh, if absolutely. they suspect something's absolutely. going on? Yeah. And absolutely. then the resource officer yeah, we, could reach out to the child? We've had that happen. Absolutely. We've done that yeah. before. Good. Really? That's yeah. really good. The other thing, too, is if, if a son or a daughter doesn't want to go to school, Suddenly, that's kind of a sign. Oh, yeah. Doesn't want to, doesn't want to face it. Yeah. May not want to go on the internet. May, like Lieutenant Ford said, become withdrawn. Not want to go on the computer. Not want to do anything. Just obviously upset. And you know the, the the sad thing about it, they're not old enough yet to really have the emotional judgment as adults. But a lot of times, these kids who are the target, somehow or other, they feel that they're partially to blame. Right. For it. Somehow or other, maybe there was an altercation, and you know they they figure, well, I'm the one who caused it, therefore I'm ashamed, and I can't tell anybody about it. That's that's part of the instructional process mm -hmm. in the schools now, when they have the classes for the kids, they tell the kids, it's not you, this mm -hmm. is not you, you've done nothing wrong, mm -hmm. just let people know what's going on. We can, you're not doing anything wrong. We don't want them to feel like they're to blame because they're mm -hmm. not. Well, we so had, revelation. Yeah, we, we revelation. had revelation. It's uh, like a different world. Someone who was on our show once or twice, uh, this couple who had children, younger children at the time, and they formed a company where they had some sort of a device that parents could put on the child's computer. Yeah, he was an engineer. He wrote a program. And it was something where the, um, the it, was, it was a screen retriever. So right. in other words, the parents could look, and the kids knew. I mean, it wasn't something that mm -hmm. the parents were doing behind the kid's back. But they could see the different screens that the child went to. They wouldn't right. necessarily see the activity itself, but it's screenshots. Sure. And that would prompt sure. the parents if sure. there was something there that just looked yeah. a little bit there, off. There is a lot of programs out there. I think yeah. if, if yeah. anybody is interested in doing that, they would probably, probably, I don't know of any sites off the top of my head because I haven't been involved with that for a bit. But if they just would have Google software to keep my child safe, something to that effect, It'll come up with ideas and thoughts yeah, if they well, want to well do the, that. Well, these people, their daughter was being uh, cyberbullied, and uh, he was a he was a software engineer. Any, anyway, he wrote a program and he captured it, and he brought it into the school because without it, the principal says, "Well, you have no evidence. Right. You have you have nothing." So he brought it in, and he had the evidence, and they called the people in, and they, he start, they stopped it. But how about the ones that a, they don't a lot start? Of right. A lot of parents are, are hesitant to use that, think they're infringing upon their child's you know, freedom and so forth. But oh, I, well, this I thing, just, the child knows it. Right. I would, just, I would just emphasize that, you know what, if you love your children, sometimes you, you, you want to encroach upon that. In, in, in the end, they would totally respect that. And I'll just I'll relay this little funny story. With my father being a police officer for 40 years. When I was in high school, occasionally I would come home 11 o'clock at night out with my buddies and he would show me the, the in those days, the, the technology was a teletype machine. <laughs> and on the teletype machine, it would show you what plate was run locally. He would say, well, at 9.45, John, your, your car was uh, ran in Stoughton Center by one of the officers. <laughs> oh, my God. But I knew my father cared about me because he yeah. wouldn't do that if he didn't. <laughs> right. and, uh, and I appreciated yeah. that. My mother used to write down the odometer on the, on the, on the car to really? see how far I went, too. So 
I, 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 I believe that type. Somebody else would use. Your <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you use wouldn't have worked. No, that wouldn't <laughs> the, the point being that if parents need to be parents, and that mm. means not friends. Sometimes mm. it means you need to show your kids you love them in a way that, um, you know, in the long run will, will prove effective. Now, what about the other side of the coin, mm. where you have parents mm. whose mm. children are doing the bullying? Do you find that sometimes these parents are as surprised as they could possibly be? Yeah, yes. not my kid. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there's they, so many what, not my kids. What out usually there. happens is during the invest, during an investigation, and and it takes a lot for us to actually get involved. Usually the schools will handle it initially. Mm -hmm. If it gets to the point where they think they can't, we'll get involved, and we'll bring them in. And the parents are usually the initial reaction is no, this can't be my son or daughter doing this. Mm -hmm. By the time it's over, everybody usually comes to an agreement and understands it and gets it. Um, and I've found from my experience that it usually works out okay in the end. Yeah. We don't, we're not looking, especially in Sharon, we're not looking to bring people to court and drag them before the judge. We're looking to just fix their behavior, mm -hmm. unless it's so severe that we have to do that other option. Mm -hmm. um, but we find that most people cooperate and get it in the yeah. end. What's an interesting phenomenon now, in my day it was the big kid, you know, the big kid that was, you know, the bully. Now yeah. is that little angelic, little uh, four, the four foot eleven uh, uh, blonde girl that has the capabilities and intelligence to manipulate the uh, social Boy, media and her so friends. Yeah. They used to be the big kids picked on the little. Yeah, kids. not yeah. necessarily the case now. It's a whole different thing. Really, right? different thing. Um, what about this other? This is a huge one, but it's all over the country. But anti-gun uh, violence with guns. That sometimes mm -hmm. you'll have a kid who might be one of those kids who you would never suspect. Sure. Right. How do how do we, uh, you know, not getting into gun control legislation? That's another whole topic. But I mean, how do we help prevent that kind of thing from happening? Well, we issue the. I mean, if we issue gun licenses, I would as chief. In order to get your license, you have to go through a bunch of steps to get it, and then once you finally get through all those steps, you get the interview with myself. Is that all in Massachusetts? Or yeah, just here. It's we, each, we, yeah. We in Massachusetts, in order to get a permit, you have to go through your local police oh. department. Um, but what I'll do is. We always talk about gun safety. I'll make sure that I'm comfortable with the person in front of me, that they're the only person that has access to the guns. The ammunition's kept separate. Just in case anybody gets into the safe, they're not gonna get the ammunition and the guns. Mm. But the thing is, and, and honestly, if somebody wants to get a gun bad enough, there are ways to get guns. Mm. If they wanna get it bad enough, mm. there's ways. But we do everything we can do to limit that here. And thankfully, we've been pretty successful here. Now, when somebody goes into one of the schools, uh, or the students themselves, is there any type of uh, monitoring where you can tell if someone were coming in with a gun? Currently, no. Uh, quite frankly, you, we've never had issues along that line, uh, but we have in the past had uh, some concerns over maybe an individual child that might be experiencing some depression and so forth, and that's, again, where the SRO jumped on top of that very quickly, Good. and mm -hmm. there was no issue mm -hmm. with it. In fact. Well, in other communities, maybe that yeah. that you might be aware of. Well, we do have certain safety measures. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're supposed to check in. You buzz in. The the, the doors are locked. So there's oh, there's yeah. a process That's for someone nothing, to get into yeah. the school. They have yeah. to go through the office here, talk to the secretary. Would we like to see uh, uh, some some sort of thing that uh, you know metal detector? Sure, but then we're talking thousands yeah. of dollars. And, sure. and right now, I, I really don't think we have that issue. Here. Yeah. Thank How about goodness. cameras in the schools? We do have those capable, yes, mm -hmm. yes, and, mm -hmm. and some mostly on the outside of the schools. We have some in the uh, hallways as well. Um, again, just for sheer safety. Mm. You know, oh, some, one of our viewers asked about this. Um, it's not in the schools, but what about home violence, uh, where people's houses might be broken into? You have these home invasions. Um, what should people be aware of when it comes to protecting themselves in their homes in those situations? I used to, I have, I have to laugh, I used to say, don't notify the post office when you go away. Don't notify the police. Don't notify the fire. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, really, <laughs> some, yeah, just some basic tips. Just look, look at it. It is Sharon, but I, yeah. and I don't want to make people paranoid, but you should lock your doors. Yeah. I, I right. hate to say that. Yeah. You'd like to think you, you don't have to. Mm. But if you really want to make it harder for them, a lot of our breaks are through unlocked doors. Yeah. People just open up the door and they get in. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Report suspicious yeah. activity, leave a light on, don't make it look like you're not there. If you have extra cars, park your car on the driveway. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's and, different uh, ways to... Uh, if people are in the house, too, they should also be following those same sure. practices, right? right? Just, just have those timers. Just don't make it easy. Just don't hand somebody access to your house. How about, how about uh, coming into the world of robots? You <laughs> get a robot sitting there and... Well, they make things go. like you can get... a. 
once the door opens or if somebody's near a house, you can get this, it sounds like a dog barking device. Oh, yeah. And you can put signs up in your house saying, yeah. I have a dog. Yeah, I have heard that's very Things effective. Things like that yeah. will work. This, yeah. We've, it, oh, we've yeah. had very few breaks where there was an animal in the house, mm. which is interesting. You know? Yeah, yeah. Really? especially if it sounds like a vicious dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, can put, you can put stickers on your house. This house is alarmed. It's like home alone. I have dogs. Yeah. yeah. We don't have a huge house breaks and Sharon go in spurts. Mm. And usually it's a group of one or two people that just start to go in the area mm. and do it. Mm. Usually, ultimately, we catch them, but they do some damage before we get them. Do they still have, like years ago, if, if the kid had a party, that all the towns would show up? Do they still do things like that? Not lately. Oh. <laughs> yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Roberta. No, 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 <laughs> we, we've been very good with it. It used to be like that, but not, not lately. Oh, that's good. No. I, again, I think the education with kids and, and their parents understand the liability there. It, it's been far better than it was in the 70s. Oh, were you at one no. of my kids' parties? <laughs> 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 No, thank God they uh, yeah. uh, all grew up. Usually they turn out okay up. in spite of yeah. what's going yes. on at the That's time. We've seen yeah. over the years, I, I mean, I've got 30 years, you've got, you've got a lot of years in Sharon. You see the kids later on, now they're adults. And yeah. They're just, they're like, thanks for Isn't being that it person. Right. It's great yeah. to see them come around. Mm. Yeah. It really is. Well, they all, they all yeah. grow up. Right. Um, and it's, it's funny, um, I got two sons, and one son says, everybody knows my car got dented except me. Yeah. You know, the brother borrowed, <laughs> borrowed the car. I think, we all have, borrow. I think we probably all have a story or two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this well, is a, oh, know, the, the do, Does anybody out there know how the word cop came about? This is for you've got to be kidding. Yeah. Believe it or not. <laughs> we don't. We don't know. Can Cops. you tell us? Is that an Cops. English term? Cops. It, it, it no? is based on the English constabulary uh, system, and it's constable on patrol. And a lot of, a lot of people thought that was a derog derogatory for, uh, term, but it really isn't. It's just constable on patrol. Constable so, on patrol. Cop. Yeah. Well, it became slang, though. It did become slang. Yeah. It stuck. Yeah. Yeah. It, it stuck. stuck. It stuck. <laughs> Constable on patrol. They used to wear the bob bobbies. Yes. They yep. called them, a bo now, why did they call them bobbies? Uh, I think it might have been based on Sir have? Robert Peel, who was the uh, founder of the English oh police system. Oh, my goodness. So I think wow. that's why they called them bobbies. Pretty yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We have yeah, a Sharon a Police and Fire Museum yep. right up on it. Uh, so we, it, it, thanks to uh, Selectman McGrath and uh, yes, others that yes, donated yes. a lot of materials. That, that's a fascinating place for kids to come to, by the way. So. That would probably be a <laughs> yeah. place to consider for a story. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a great yeah, idea. That. Yeah. I, I got one more good one for you. You've got to be kidding. You're talking about t being a parent and taking away the Internet. This young girl sued her father. <laughs> Uh, for taking away the internet. <laughs> How'd that turn out? Uh, <laughs> Were you well, representing one, one her? Court, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, uh, one, uh, the court appointed a lawyer for her. I can't believe it. This was in Canada. But wow. the, Supreme the world court, has changed. Yeah, they, yes. they found for the father and then she took it to the Supreme Court. Some we're getting, we're getting, getting the signal. Yeah, we're getting the <laughs> signal. That's the well, air. as we said, this went, this went very fast, well, didn't you. it? Thank you. Yes, yes, it went very fast. Yes. Hmm. Anything That's before uh, we close that you wanted to say? No, God bless the both of you, and you. Um, we hope you enjoy a long, 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 long term. I, I know your parents uh, up above are so proud of you, and Thank this you. guy here is proud of you. We, we're all proud of you, and we're so happy yes, for you. Yes, very much so. I could so, have a better mentor, I'll tell you right now. Thank, Thank you both wonderful. so much for being Thank here you. today. It's a pleasure. And, Thank you. Um, so if any of our viewers, if you're interested in finding out more about any of these programs, the cyberbullying or anything yeah. else, or if you have other ideas about shows, we'd love to hear from you. Because remember, this is your show, The Law, Your, your Money, money. And, and You. you.